Welcome. This is the uh, Heritage Baptist uh, Church's uh, message for Thursday, and uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Jones. Glad you're here. Uh, we are located in Columbus, Indiana at uh, 2010 Dr. Spark Drive, and uh, I've been the pastor here. Uh, my wife and I uh, have been here for nine and a half years. Uh, we started the church July the 10th, nine and a half years ago, and um, We've had a great uh, time here uh, serving in the Columbus area, and this is our home. And um, we're glad you're here today. We started a series uh, two weeks ago on the truth, on the truth. And unfortunately, the truth is in short supply. And the, maybe it's always been, in a sense, uh, in short supply. And uh, we're in desperate need of it in the day that we live in. Um, I want to give you a couple of prayer requests, then we'll get right into the, the message today. Um, today, uh, our church is, uh, uh taking some big steps. Uh, we, we bought a building almost a year ago at the end of February of 2020, and, uh, it needed extensive remodeling. And, uh, we, uh, two weeks, three weeks after we bought the building, uh, the virus, shutdowns began and uh, just uh, different things have happened uh, that have slowed our progress tremendously. And um, during that time, we continued to raise money. Our people were, were very faithful through all this and um, continued to, to attend in, in a very unique way and uh, continued to give uh, just uh, over, over and above. And um, Hopefully we're going to be able to cash flow this this remodel. We got our uh, building permit finally secured that last week. Um, we've secured all of our contractors, and uh, today we meet with a, a metal company that's uh, going to install uh, some beams in the central the foyer area. That's the first uh, part. Everything kind of uh, rotates on that hub there. And so that's got to get done, that has to be done. And so uh, we should pray that we'd get on their um, schedule and that would go very quickly. And uh, so that's the big prayer request. And then we've got an outreach Saturday that uh, we'd love to see God do something wonderful in. And uh, it's a food uh, kind of thing, food giveaway, a dinner, a chili dinner. So anyway... Just little personal things there uh, for our church. And just pray for us. We'll pray for you. And uh, give me just a moment here, we'll pray. Father, we do thank you for the day. I pray that you bless your word. I pray, Lord, that you'd help our church, Lord, to continue to go forward. Make a way, Lord, where things have been a struggle. I pray that uh, things will begin to open up, Lord. Uh, give us a way, a way clear. Uh, let this part of the project go quickly, Lord. Uh, that no one would be uh, injured, everyone would be safe. And uh, thank you, Lord, for providing the monies that you've given our church, Lord. I pray for souls through this outreach Saturday. Uh, help us to, to reach people with for Christ, uh, with the gospel. And we'll thank you for all that you do. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. If you would, would you go to John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and let me just kind of uh, rehash a little bit here, uh, build the foundation again. If you're stepping in, um, you may want to go back and watch the first two videos. They're, it's not maybe absolutely necessary, but I think it'd get you on the right footing here. Uh, then also you might want to pause here and grab your Bible. Um, so about two weeks ago, we began to look at this, and in John chapter 18 verse uh, 38, uh, Pilate is uh, judging Jesus Christ. And in the course of their conversation, Pilate asked this uh, very poignant question. He said, what is truth? I don't know if he really wanted to hear the answer. Uh, the answer was standing there in front of him. But he does verbalize uh, the question that uh, probably most of mankind has asked at one time or another. And we're asking quite a bit today, what is truth? What is what is real? Who is genuine? Uh, is this fake or is it true? And um, that question is uh, 
very uh, timely, I think. So what is truth? And so we talked a little bit about in that uh, message about that truth has been discarded. It has been cast aside. It has uh, been devalued in many ways. Uh, people don't uh, hold people to a high standard of truth. They allow dishonesty. And um, some people are very good <laughs> at uh, misspeaking, uh, stretching the truth, uh, exaggeration, uh, absolute uh, bold-faced uh, lying. And Isaiah says in Isaiah 59, verse 14, it says that, uh, talking about truth, has fallen in the streets. It means it's been thrown out. It's been trampled upon. It's been, it's, it's, it's not of any consequence. It's like the garbage that was thrown out uh, in the streets, like refuse. It's like uh, sewage that would run through the middle. It's, it's not anything to some people. Um, but there is a longing, I think, inside of, of people that we want the truth. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4 says this, that we have a, a God of truth. God is a lot of things. God is holy. Uh, God is love, but also God is truth. Um, there is there is no shadow of turning in him. There is no uh, lie in him. Man, every man is a liar, uh, and God can only speak the truth. Uh, in that same vein there, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so you could say it like this, that Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. We have a God of truth. We have a Savior that is that is truth. And so um, you're looking for truth, you look to God. You're looking for truth, look to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're looking for truth, you look uh, to the Bible, God's word. And so uh, truth can be had. And that seems like such a stretch today to even find the truth. Uh, is it in the newspaper? Is it on the TV screen? Is it is it uh, in my uh, feed? Is it is it on the internet? Do I hear it on the airwaves? Do do the people that surround me do they speak the truth? Uh, and so you wonder about that. Where where am I going to find it at? But God tells us this that truth can be had. Matter of fact, in Proverbs twenty three verse twenty three, He says to buy the truth and sell it not. And so it can be had. But it could also be lost. It could be it could be given away. It could be it could be stolen away. And so uh, we are to pursue the truth. Uh, wisdom is crying in the streets, and so we need to have an ear for it. We need to desire it. We need to look for it. We need to want it. I think we need to pray for it. God, give me the truth. Help me to see the light. Um, and God will provide the truth if we just. Hear it. I, one of my favorite uh, salvation testimonies was a man I used to pastor, and he talked about how he was uh, had lost his family, and uh, he was a drunkard, and he was in a, a walk in a dry creek bed one day, and and out for a walk, and he said, I, I just cried out. He said, If God, if you're real, send someone to help me. And he said, It wasn't just a day or two. Somebody knocked on his door. And you say, What a coincidence? No, no, no. I think. God honored the prayer of this desperate man that wanted to hear the truth. And so truth can be had. We are to buy the truth. I think that, that says in that that there is a sacrifice that you must look. Uh, you must uh, seek it. Uh, and we know that if we seek, it will be found. If we knock, it will be opened unto us. And so it brings us to the place today in John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We're going to begin at verse 31, look at verse verse 31, 32 today. <clears throat> so get out the Bible. It says, then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want you to notice, first of all, is that verse 31 begins this sentence. If you continue in my word, and it does not end, the sentence does not end in verse 31, but it continues on into verse 32. 
And so he's saying something here to these believing Jews that have believed on him. They believe the Lord. And so he says, if you continue in my word, if you stay where you're at, if you abide in what I say. And so there is a link between his word and the truth. He says, then are you my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. His word and truth are linked. His word is truth. His words are true. He's true. He said, I am the truth. And so I want you to notice these things, this link here to truth here, to his word, if we would abide in it, if we'd stay in it, if we'd dwell in the truth. This is not a casual brush with it. This is not, this is not uh, a minute devotion for the day. I think this is a constant uh, plunging our minds into the truth. Uh, we're soaking it up like a sponge, it, and like a sponge, it leaks out, and we got to go back again and again and again. And I like the word saturated, that our minds, our hearts, our lives are saturated in him, saturated in the truth. And so you take a sponge that is dry, it's, it's maybe sit on a, the back of a counter somewhere, it's, 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 it's not touched anything liquid. But I tell you, when you put that in the water, the feel of it is different. It, it, it becomes different. Uh, where it was hard, it's, it's soft, uh, it's, it's useful. And I think in the same way, a life, a mind, a, a, a Christian, a, a soul, is different when it is plunged into the truth. It gives life to that, that person. And so uh, there's three things that we see here that if we would continue in his word, if we'd continue in the truth, if we'd live there, abide in it, think on it, meditate on it, uh, desperately seek it. He says there's three things that are going to happen. First thing is that you're going to be my disciples indeed. You're going to be a follower of Christ. If you follow the truth, you're going to follow Christ. Some people uh, would say that uh, if you would ask them, tell me about your spiritual, uh, tell me, are you a Christian? They may say, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm spiritual. Uh, I'm not even sure what that actually means uh, anymore. Um, but if you're a Christian, if, if, you're, if you're in the truth, you will be a follower. You cannot be a Christian. You cannot be spiritual, unless you follow him, follow his word. And so he links that. If you continue in his word, you're going to become a disciple of him, a follower of him, someone that is an adherent of him. And so uh, our love for him ought to grow, our likeness to him ought to grow, um, our, our thoughts ought to be more like him, our deeds ought to be more like him. Um, and so uh, that's the first thing that happens. We, we will become we will become his disciple. We are definitely his disciple. So you may wonder, am I doing a good job with this? Are you his disciple? Are you in the truth? Are you in his word? The second thing that will happen, he says here, he says, and ye shall know the truth. Now, isn't that a strange thing? In a day that we scratch our head and we're having great difficulty finding the truth or deciding is that truth, he says, if you continue in my word, you will know truth. For one thing, if you continue in his word, that you're going to know it. You're going to know the Bible. People that know the Bible know the truth. People that know his word know what is real. His word is real. There's life in this. But I think it also means a, a fuller meaning to that is also this. You shall know the truth. I think, I think that when we know the Bible, we will be discerning people. We'll be able to weigh things out. We will, we will, we'll be able to hear things and to be able to pass a judgment. I know people often say, particularly people that don't know, know the Lord, they say, you shouldn't judge. Uh, well, this is, this is the kind of thing where, yes, you should. Not particularly people, but you ought to be able to judge whether something is right or wrong. Um, we're not, we're not trying to pass judgment in the sense that we're the judge of them, but we are trying to make decisions based on the truth or whether something is a lie. And so 
uh, he said, you will, you, you shall know the truth. You'll, you'll be able to exercise wisdom in a situation. You know, the opposite of wisdom is foolishness. And, and many people, that's, that's their modus operandi. That's the way they operate their life. They operate their life on foolishness. They, they do foolish things. They say foolish things. They, their life is a, is a foolish mess. And I'm not trying to particularly call someone a fool, but I don't want to be a fool. I don't want to be a foolish person. I don't want to misspend my life. I have this, I have this one, one run through this life. I've got one opportunity to get it right. There, there is no such thing as reincarnation. The Bible doesn't teach anything like that. You have one journey through here. You better get it right. And he says, if ye continue in my word, you're going to be my disciple, but you're also going to know the truth. You're going to be able to understand things. You're going to be able to connect the dots. The pieces are going to go together. You're going to be able to say, I, I get it. I see it. This is what should happen. This is what sh I should do. There, I hope you have people in your life like this. I have people in my life that I turn to people that are mentors, people that are counselors to me, people that, that know things about, uh, uh, families, people that know things about, uh, uh, life, about money, about, uh, just the different levels, the different, uh, pieces of the pie of, of life. And, and some people know, uh, this better than some, some things better than other things. And so those are the people I turn to. And, uh, you know, that's wisdom in itself to turn to people that understand things. Uh, sometimes there are people, you can't tell them anything. They, they won't listen to reason. But if you're a person that continues in the word of God, you're going to hear, you're going to listen to the truth and that it's going to change you. You're going to know it. You're going to recognize it. You're going to be able to identify it. It's, it's going to be recognizable to you. There, there are some things that just uh, doesn't, it doesn't ring true. It doesn't sound right. There, there are times I can't quite put my finger on it. And I know there's the work of the Holy Spirit also in this that brings us to, and we may talk about that next week, that he'll bring you to truth. And, but I've, I've got to have truth in me. And so uh, I'm going to be a discerning person. I'm, I'll know the truth. And the last thing, and this is get, gets quoted quite a bit, and I think people, I don't know that they misquote it, they misapply it though. It says, and the truth shall make you free. They, they seldom talk about how to get that truth. They leave out the part that's connected to Christ. They leave out the part about his word. They leave out the part about uh, getting in the scriptures. If you continue in my word, the truth, if you do the first thing, if, then the truth shall make you free. Free. The removal of the chains, the re removal of the restrictions, the removal of the bonds that have kept you down. And I know that's, that's uh, linked oftentimes with uh, slavery, and uh, I, I believe the truth set that even free. Um, and so truth will make you free on many different levels. It will free your mind. Uh, it will free uh, you uh, emotionally. It'll, it'll free you spiritually. Some years ago, uh, my son and I, we uh, basketball fans and uh, uh, the Big Ten basketball tournament was being held in Indianapolis uh, that year. And uh, the first night of the tournament is uh, there's four, uh, two games, four teams go play. The rest of the tournament is uh, assigned seating. Uh, the first night is general, general mission. You get there early, you pick whatever seat you want. We got there very early, very early. And uh, so we raced in and uh, we were just a just a few, just a handful of people there. They got that early and we picked our seats. I mean, out of thousands of seats, we got down on the front row in front of the Big Ten broadcasting uh, booth. And so we got to watch all that take place. I got to interact with Robbie Hummel uh, just a little bit. And so that just was very, very cool. And uh, we'd been sitting there just a couple, two, three minutes. And, and a young lady came in. And uh, I'm talking about there were thousands of empty seats, thousands. <laughs> and she climbed over my son, climbed over me, and she sat down next to me. 
out of all the thousands of empty seats, she chooses to sit down next to, to us. And she says, is the seat taken? I said, no, no, it's not. It's not taken. And she had in her arms a bundle, a baby there in her arms. And she said, uh, can I sit here? I said, I thought it was weird. I said, but yeah, you, you can sit there. I'm thinking there's thousands of seats and you sit here next to us. You know, I like, I'm a big guy. I like to kind of just spread out, you know? And uh, so I said, yeah. I thought, well, we could move over at some point. We could, we could move back. I don't know what I thought, but, and she sit there a little bit and she asked, she, she didn't even really know what was going on. And I said, you know, this is a big 10 basketball tournament. These teams are playing. She said, oh, good. And she said, uh, she said, if my baby and I get up, uh, would you save my seat? I'm thinking, ma'am, there are thousands of seats in here. This this is going to be pretty poorly attended tonight. And I said, I said, sure, sure, sure. I'll save your seat uh, right here next to me. And so at one point, she she finally gets up. This is before the basketball game began, and um, she she leaves and asks me to save her seat. And uh, she never came back. And uh, maybe she found another seat. I don't know. And I got talking to my son. I said, um, I said, did you ever see the baby? He said, no. He was, I was thinking about that. And uh, she, she never did show the baby. And, uh, and we got to talk about it. I don't think there was a baby. I think that it was some kind of, uh, and maybe there was some mental issues, mental illness there going on. And I'm not trying to make fun of that. But I'm just saying that, that it seemed like, there was a lie involved and, and maybe, maybe there was drug abuse. I, I don't know what the situation was, but I know this, that when people live in a lie, they live in dishonesty, they, they that, that it, it brings bondage with it. it. It brings a distortion of the facts. And so uh, there is a negative side. When I, when we think about the truth shall make you free, uh, if you look at it on the negative side of this, the lie or dishonesty will bring bondage. Uh, untruth, falsehood. Um, sometimes we say, you're telling a story. It's a nice way of saying, you're, you're, you're lying to me. Uh, we may say, when you think of deceit, will bring bondage. We, we try to pretty it up sometimes. You're telling a white lie. That's a fib. You're misrepresenting the truth. But when you come down to it, um, this negative side of it, if truth shall make you free, a lie, dishonesty, will bring tremendous bondage. If you go all the way back to the garden, the first sin, uh, wasn't that predicated on a lie, an untruth? And I think about all the bondage, all the death, all the destruction, all the restriction that came out of lying dishonesty. Truth shows up and truth, truth sets us free. It says in, <clears throat> I didn't write, write the address down for this, but Christ talking about the devil, he says the devil, for he is a liar and the father of it. He gave birth to that lie in the garden. And so uh, lies are powerful Dishonesty is powerful, tremendously destructive, wrecking of lives, uh, entangling, sticky, hard to get away from. Sometimes we say it's they they he wove a, a web of lies, and so some of those lies have to do with this that that. There is no God. There's nothing after this life. Uh, there is no eternity. You know, hey, your good could outweigh the bad. You'd be all right. Sometimes the lie is your life is over. There is no hope. There's nothing better than this. Sometimes the, the lie is, is more subtle, and people will say things like, uh, hey, the Bible's a, a good book. Uh, it contains the truth. You got to look in there and find some truth. That's a lie. But can I tell you this? The truth is more powerful than the lie. The truth 
in spite of the lie, can make you free, set you free. It has the ability to undo, to give life, to give hope, to free from bondage, to wipe away sin. You probably have heard stories like this, and we hear them from time to time. A man's in prison. He was accused, uh, charged, tried, and sentenced for a crime. Um, he goes to prison, maybe for a short time, maybe for a tremendously long time. And they do a, a, a new DNA test. They didn't have it available maybe at the time of his trial. They do the DNA test and they find out, hey, he, he couldn't have done this. It wasn't him. New evidence is entered in. What's happened is the truth has shown up. Maybe they had pieces of the truth, but the truth will set this man free. You know what? I've been made free. The more truth you have, the more free you are. The less truth you have, the less free you are. The less light you have. The truth entered in to my life. I began to hear the truth. Uh, and I, I heard the truth of God. I heard the Bible uh, taught to me on a systematic basis. I, I, I understood that Romans 1 through 3 teaches that all men are guilty before God, but it got more personal. I, the truth of it is that I was guilty before God, that I was a sinner. I learned that the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. That's a hard truth, isn't it? That's tough love. And you say, how's that helpful? Well, the truth's setting me free. I am a sinner, and as a sinner, I deserve death. I'm I'm going to die. I'm that I'm separated from God, that that there is an eternity that awaits me, that that there is a hell for those that that do not believe. The truth of it was that Jesus Christ loved me, that he came to this planet, that he died. Even though I was a sinner, he died for me. Those are all truths. I didn't know those truths. What am I to do with that? It says in Romans chapter 10, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as a boy, I turned from my sin and I trusted in God. I trusted in the truth. Did I feel saved? I did. I wept. It was a wonderful night that I got saved. But you know, there have been times that I didn't feel saved. There's times that I even doubted my salvation. Not a lot, but some. And I would look in the Bible again, and I'd look at what I'd done, and I'd look at what the Bible promised, and I could stand on the truth of the Bible and know, like it says in 1 John, I could know that I know him. And I know that he knows me. How do you know you're saved, preacher? Because I believe the truth. I'm looking at the truth. I'm looking in the truth. And the truth has set me free. You know what this world needs? It needs people to take the truth outside of a church, outside of your home. And we need to share the truth with the people that we work with, people that we care about, people that we don't know people that are angry, people that have, that are hopeless, people that are that are uh vile, people that are that are good people. They need to know the truth. And if they continue in that truth, they'll be a disciple. They're they're going to know the truth and the truth will set them free. May God help us. Come back. Hope to see you Sunday. We'll have a message Sunday morning, Sunday night at 10 and at 6. And uh Sunday morning, we're working our way through the book of Luke. Uh, Sunday night, we're looking at this thing of falling away, a great falling away, a turning, a turning from God. And um, then on Thursdays, we're doing this series on the truth. So God bless you. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.